In this video, I'll be making a miniature air gun that can fire both the darts seen in the opening clips, as well as airsoft pellets, or really anything that can fit down the barrel. In addition to being able to function using compressed air, switching out the rear cap for one that has been modified with a piezoelectric igniter allows a combustible fuel, such as a quick spray of isopropyl alcohol, to fire the projectiles instead. If using this modification, darts can be breech-loaded between shots when the cap is open to refuel, rather than being dropped down the end of the barrel, which is the easiest way to reload the air power design. The simplicity of switching between the two possible configurations is due to the materials I've chosen to use for this project, primarily the air slash combustion chamber, which is made out of a soda bottle preform. Preforms are what all plastic soda bottles look like before they've been expanded in a factory into the various shapes and sizes you're used to seeing on store shelves. They're sold online, often for use as plastic test tubes, and are quite inexpensive. Since preforms are made of super strong polycarbonate plastic and completely airtight with a regular bottle cap, they're perfect for this project. As a bonus, the sides are transparent, so it's easy to see how all the parts will come together. I first need to begin work on the design that will be powered by compressed air. This will use a coaxial piston valve to fire the darts. The concept is that high pressure inside of the chamber will force the face of a piston to seal against the barrel. When the lid is cracked open, air escapes behind the piston, pulling it away from the barrel so that all the remaining high pressure air blows out the projectile. If you've seen my video about how I make alcohol rockets out of water bottles, you already know that half-inch diameter PVC pipe fits perfectly in standard bottle mouths. The opening in bottle preforms is exactly the same size, so a short section of half-inch PVC will work great as a piston. A section cut just a little bit longer than the pipe is wide is about right. This small piece is placed on a scrap of paper and filled halfway with hot glue or epoxy, leaving a hollow area in the back. Once the glue solidifies, the paper can be torn away, leaving a flat surface that I'll soon be attaching a rubber face to. A piece of rubber, at least as wide as the piston, is prepared and set nearby. Some super glue on the flat face will secure the rubber permanently. Any excess rubber can be trimmed away and smoothed with sandpaper until it easily slips in and out of the preform. The piston is now complete, and I can move on to install the barrel. For this project, as with many of my projects before, I'm using a steel brake line for the barrel that fits both airsoft pellets as well as my homemade darts. I have a separate video on my channel that shows how I make those darts if you'd like to check it out later. The brake line that I'm using needs to have one of the flares on the end cut off, which can be done with either a hacksaw or with a small pipe cutter like I'm using here. With the flare gone, the fittings on the line can be set aside, and any stickers can be removed as well. The line will extend through the front of the preform, so my next task is to drill a hole of the same size or slightly larger than the line's diameter. Cementing the barrel in place is a bit of a tricky process, and the first step is to determine where on the line epoxy will need to be applied. The end that still has a flare is set on the piston next to the preform so that I can mark about where the line will be coming through. Before I continue any further, it's a good idea to smooth the flared end of the barrel with some sandpaper. This will help it seal against the piston once it's installed. With the barrel prepared, I can now mix a little bit of epoxy, which will be what I use to cement it into the preform. The epoxy is applied lightly all around the circumference of the barrel, just above where I measured and marked it. It's then carefully guided into the hole made for it, doing my best not to touch the wet epoxy to the sides of the tube. Once the ring of epoxy reaches the end of the preform, it should automatically make a seal around the barrel. To adjust it to the perfect depth before the epoxy cures, the piston is used to push the barrel in on a flat surface. The piston needs a little extra room to slide forward and back, so a nickel or washer is placed below the piston to force the barrel in just a little further. Once it's been set to the proper depth, and while the epoxy is still wet, the final adjustment is to make sure the barrel is centered and that the end is flat against the piston. For added strength, I decided to add some extra epoxy to the outside gap, though the inside is likely all that was required. While I wait for the epoxy to harden, the fill valve for this air gun can be installed into a soda bottle cap to fit the preform. I'll be using an air compressor tank valve, which will allow any bicycle pump to fill the chamber. 
A hole is drilled through the cap to allow the tank valve to thread in. The easiest way to get the size of the hole just right is to drill it slightly too small, then slowly widen it with a file or needle nose pliers as shown until the valve is able to fit. Once the epoxy has been given enough time to cure, the compressed air powered version of this project is completed. The piston is inserted into the preform with the rubber face against the barrel and the cap threaded on behind it. Once filled with about 60 psi of compressed air from a bike pump, opening the rear cap will pull the piston away from the barrel and fire any loaded projectile at impressive speed. If the piston has trouble creating a seal against the barrel, some TFE thread paste on the rubber surface should fix the problem. Now to begin the combustion modification, I start by disassembling a barbecue lighter to harvest the parts I need, which are found in the trigger assembly. This is a piezoelectric igniter, a very useful device that can create a spark between its two wires when depressed. This will be my ignition source. Another bottle cap is prepared by drilling two small holes to accept the wires on the igniter, one centered in the cap and one toward the side, though not so close to the side that it will get in the way of the cap threading on properly. The wires on the igniter are trimmed down, one slightly shorter than the other, and a section on the end stripped as shown. They are then fed into the cap with the longer wire in the center hole and glued in place. The outside wire can now be bent toward the center to adjust the distance of the spark gap, Pressing down on the igniter now results in a beautiful blue spark. The purpose of the second wire sticking straight forward in the center is so that it can be inserted into the back of the barrel, preventing ammunition from falling all the way down into the chamber. As an optional addition, the trigger piece from the lighter can be glued onto the igniter's button for a finishing touch. It's also possible to use stiffer wire inside the bottle cap and attach the igniter with a splice and some shrink wrap tubing for a more durable design. Otherwise, this project is complete. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Nighthawk in Light. I have many more projects that can be viewed there now. Remember to leave me some feedback in the comments below, and thanks for watching.